Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you've all had a great day. I'm super excited because in this video, I'm going to be talking about a French luxury brand called Mona. And I had the privilege of visiting their very small, quaint atelier or workshop whilst I was in Paris. So in today's video, one, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the history because I know a lot of you may not have heard about this brand. Two, showing you footage of the tour of their actual workshop which is in Paris. I love that. I love that it's still made in the heart of Paris. And thirdly, I have an unboxing for you and can I just say this is totally different to anything I've owned before. Mona is a French luxury brand and it's named after its founder Pauline Mona. Yes, she was a woman and she was a pioneer and absolutely very visionary. Did you know that Mona is actually the oldest French trunk maker? Yes, even older than Louis Vuitton. I found that such an interesting tidbit of information. And why did I say she was such a visionary and pioneer? Well, firstly, she was a woman and back in the day, they were all men. Secondly, when she named her bags, even before Hermes named like the Birkin after Jane Birkin. She named her bag after a famous actress, Gabrielle Rejan at that time. So this was like in the 19th century. Also, she patented a lot of her creations back in the day from like locks to waterproofing. I just can't tell you how impressed I was with this brand when I went to visit the workshop. Just the brilliant craftsmanship, the detailing, the amount of work these artisans put in, like in terms of their bags, they take two, three days to make. We're just talking about one bag. So it is equivalent to Hermes standards, like in terms of their Birkin or Kelly, it does take uh, Birkin or Kelly's like, you know, two or three days to make. But the biggest difference is the price tag. So, I mean, by no means are these bags cheap. But relatively, like compared to, say, Hermes, they are still really accessible. And the thing is, you're probably thinking, why haven't I heard about this brand? That's because they started off really well. They were known for making trunks, um, automobile trunks, and, you know, to all the high society back in the day. And then I think around the 60s and 70s, it kind of lost popularity and unfortunately it closed its doors. But the really fascinating thing is... Bernard Arnault, who, for those of you that may not know, is the CEO of LVMH. And LVMH is a huge conglomerate. So think Louis Vuitton in there, they've got Dior in there, they've got Celine, just a whole heap of brands. Anyway, he kind of bought the brand, but it's not under LVMH, it's under his own sort of uh, company. And he bought the brand in 2011 and, yeah, just brought the brand back to life. And since then, there isn't that many boutiques that have opened up. There's probably less than 10 around the world. But I think that's sort of like their marketing strategy. Like, if you were to carry a Monar bag, people wouldn't know. And personally, for me, I really like that. I really like that it's understated. People don't know. But just the work on each bag I was just seriously gaga. I was just in awe, just, I was just loving every minute of the tour. And so guys, grab a cup of tea or a drink or your drink of choice. And I think that for handbag lovers like me or in even just luxury lovers, you appreciate this tour. I had the marketing manager personally take me around. I spoke to some of the artisans and each bag is really painstakingly made. Like it is made by the one artisan from A to Z. It just takes hours and hours of work. And I don't know if you guys know, but previously I used to be a handbag uh, buyer and shoe buyer. So I just found this fascinating and truly I just think these bags are a work of art. So without further ado, I've told you a little bit about the brand. Let's get right into the tour. Hi 
Hi, so I'm in Mona and I have had the privilege of Helen, who is the PR manager, and she is going to be taking us through a little bit of the history of this amazing brand. So we're going to start off with the... With this very interesting vintage trunks. Vintage trunks. That you can see here in our Paris flagship. So you can see a little bit of the evolution of all the Moana trunks during the times. Mm -hmm. First with the first shapes that were a little bit rounded. And then they were much flat to go into the train transport. It was much easier to put them to make piles of trunks. So it started off really rounded. Yeah. And how old is this particular trunk? Oh, it's more than 100 or 100, wow. And then it went flatter to yeah. fit into the trains. Yes. All right. I love this yeah. evolution, yes. This one is very interesting because yes. you can see that the monogram Moana, which yes. is the initial M, yes. and in this on this first vintage trunks, they were painted by hand. Amazing. Amazing. Look at that. You see how this briefcase has this um, rounded yes. bottom curve that was for in line with when they first made the trunks to fit on the automobiles. Exactly. Yes. So it's still unmade by a trunk maker mm. in the center of France. So something like this, how long does that take to make? For one more, one, one month at least. One month? Yeah. Wow. Because everything you can see, we're going to open it. Yes. Finishings are incredible. The finishings are amazing. You can see all the one month of labor, labor more, of love. At least, at least one month. Depending on of the size of the suitcase. Of the suitcase, the yeah. All the locks are patented by Moana. Yeah. This one is called Langue de Chat. It means cat tongue. Cat tongue. Oh. oh. It looks like a. Cat it does tongue. look like a cat tongue. <laughs> look yeah. at this. This is a puzzle of leather. Yes. You have the bottom of the leather, mm -hmm. and then the artisan is cutting is the design one by one. Yeah. It's the pieces of the puzzle. Yes. And then he's taking them back in piece in order to uh, to get a perfect result. Well, you cannot feel any difference. You can't feel any difference, but really, it's a, he's done it. Puzzle. He's done it like one it at a time. It takes hours. Of work See. because it's very delicate work. Because normally, if I just I'll just think, oh yeah, that's printed, but it's yes. not. It's no. each piece put check. into the yes. puzzle, and it's so seamless. Yes. You cannot see the difference. This one has an iconic bag, and it is called the Rejane. 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 She was a very famous actress, actress in the Belle Époque area, and she was a friend of Pauline Moana's yes. founder. And how uh, this is the most popular bag? Absolutely. And secondly, the Gabrielle. And the Gabrielle. So Gabrielle was the real name of Miss Rejane. Miss Rejane. You can see here that the interesting thing. Gabrielle is the lock that turns turns like that like and go back into places. Beautiful. And in this Gabrielle style, this leather is called Caracas. Okay. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it is quite. I mean, if you guys know, it is. Is it's sort of a. It's a stamped leather. So super durable as well and it's probably if I had to say what it was similar to is probably quite similar to Epsom. So I mean this is the first bag. When the house was relaunched in 2011. In 2011. That was the first bag that was uh, presented and yes. it's called the Pauline because it was the first name of the founder Pauline Moana. You can see here a limousine vintage trunk. It was created in 1902. 1902. Yes, it was patented that year, and it was an exclusive uh, model at Moana. So you were the first one to do. We the, were the only ones. The only ones we to do. We were the only, only ones. one to do the bottom curve, and people recognize a Moana trunk with that specific, with that specific shape. Yes, that's why with the bags, I mean with the suit, 
cases yes. nowadays, you've kept yeah, that because absolutely. it's almost... Yeah. 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 history, because you were known it's for like it. It's like yes. like our DNA. Your DNA. So guys, I am so privileged to be inside the Mona workshop. It is such a quaint workshop, but there is, it's a small team, but it's a dedicated team. They're so highly skilled. And we're gonna go around to some of the stations and have a look at what they are doing. So this is Jonathan, he is the director of the atelier. So if we start off here, are they just making the little, what is, what's going on here? What? Alors ça c'est le macaron. Macaron, or the little macaron. Yes. <coughs> macaron étoile. Oh yes. Oui. That's special for Christmas. Yes. yes. So you can see like they're all yes. making it. Il est en train de faire les finitions aussi. The finish. The finish. Yes. Edge painting. Edge painting. Edge painting. Edge painting. Edge painting. May I add? May I add? Edge painting. Because we put until eight layers of finishing until we get perfect results. So this edge painting has eight layers. Can you just see that? This is the version of the clutch yes. and this is the making this young the side. lady here. She yes. is doing she is currently doing the side of the of this clutch. Wow. As you can see guys, they don't make many pieces <laughs> and they all have their own set of like yeah. tools. You see, she has, she has this nice lady here, she has prepared a body for yeah. the clutch. Each um, of the artisans, when they make the clutch for example, each of them will make so it's always slightly different because it is so handmade. We'll be always slightly yeah. different. So how long would from start to finish would this clutch take to make? Between two and three days. Two and three yes. days. Yeah. Wow. All started at the same time. So you see basically that we're all working in the, set, mm. um, in the same piece of the bag, yes. really. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I mean um, some are faster than some, faster some others. Faster. Out of all the bags, like which one takes the longest to make? The ballerine. The ballerine. It's tricky because of the handles. It takes ages to make yeah. one it's handle. It takes a couple of hours. So this particular handle, it's only on that ballerine bag? Or yes. on other bags, or just this bag? And it, used, it all started with the... Oh, the old... This is a vintage one. Yeah, the vintage yeah. one. Yeah. Yes. As so you can see, there's always a theme. It's from the vintage, you take inspiration of that into... Now this is for the ballerine. The ballerine. And we're just going to go through um, that red one there. And now, is it Julian? Yes, it is. Julian. It's going to just explain <coughs> why this particular handle takes so long to make. Why is it so tricky? Because when we receive it, it's just metal. Yes. It's what we call the sole of um, the handle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a couple of that. I'm just showing you one. Mm -hmm. We want it to be um, smooth mm. when you handle it and totally covered with uh, leather. So we have to fix three lengths of leather with this. So you, you see, like, it's, it's quite a thick leather yes. that we skived several times. Skived is when, when, yeah, you, when you take, yes, the, take a layer uh, off. Exactly. Yep, yep. To achieve something very, very thin. Very thin. Okay. So uh, one, two, and three. Three layers. Three layers like this. So you have to imagine that it's fixed with glue. Mm, okay. Yes. And the little part. Then we have this one at the back. Mm -hmm. And then you have another one. Let's say that you can see it mm. does like a little bump. So you can touch it. 
there's a it's not worked right yes, now. So if worked. I have to yes. working on this one, it, it, would, be it so would be very smooth, smooth okay? And then we, de we do a uh, hand stitching, mm -hmm. then we cut, and then we do a very nice finishing like this one. So just the handle in itself, yeah. that seems to take a long time to do. It takes three hours. Wow. So we, we have a couple, so six hours. Six hours just for the handle, guys. As you can see, it's like completely leather filled. Mm -hmm, it is. So guys, we're just going through what makes Mona unique and Jonathan, as I said, who's the director, just taking me through it. So we've said it's made in France. Everything is like the French technique. Everything is leather outside and inside. And the finishing. And, and the finishing. Unique. The best finishing yes. on the market. On the finishing on the market. Yes. Want to keep them like the best kept secret. <laughs> yes. So that is going to be um, going forward, you're always going to maintain that with Mona. You want it so to be little. exclusive. Um, yeah. There's not going to be many pieces made. Yeah. And even when you expand worldwide, Absolutely. if they're going to get a range, just say of the Gabriel, they might only get like three or three or four of a certain color, and then that's, that's it. it. That's color. Besides the permanent so colors, the colors will be changed each season. So if the I miss color. out on that season, yeah, it's, it's gone. Yeah. Exclusive, so you, if you see a color that you like, yeah. buy it. <laughs> So this is the mini vanity and the pale pink has come in. <gasps> Look how pretty it is. So this is all perforated leather, Absolutely. is that correct? all perforated. And you were telling me before that the perforation was like inspired, inspired by... Inspired from the marquetry trunk, which had the same marquetry design. Yes. Yes. It was the red Mahokan trunk made during the Roaring Twenties. The Roaring Twenties. Yes. Love it. And then the stitching here, you were yes, saying that it's stitching. the angled stitching. Entirely hand stitch. No machine, sewing machine whatsoever is used on this type of mini vanity. Mm. And uh, the thread is waxed before it's actually sewn okay. to avoid tangling or breaking. Yes. So one needle will go downwards, one needle will go upwards, mm -hmm. and the artisan will pull both needles separate from each other giving this angle effect. This angled effect. This is what the pale pink mini vanity looks like. What do you think guys? So that's what it looks like on me. And then I'm going to try the yellow. Here's the yellow. And then that is the pink. So I hope you guys enjoy that tour. I know I absolutely loved it and I found it just so interesting and fascinating. But let me show you what I got. You probably couldn't guess from the footage which style I picked, but I can't wait to show you. So it came in this gorgeous bag saying Monar Paris orange. And funnily enough, like Louis Vuitton and Hermes, but anyway, and then it came in the box. Yes, I brought the box and bag back with me and it also had um, a little ribbon. I have obviously unboxed it, but I haven't used the bag yet. So this beautiful orange box, it's great quality. And 
it was packaged better guys but I did take a lot of packaging out anyway let me just put the box down you probably can guess from the outline but it comes in this very thick dust bag to reveal Ta-da! And this is called, hold on, give me a second. It's just so beautiful. This is called the Mini Vanity. It is literally, to me, a work of art. And you're probably thinking, Mel, why did you choose this bag? First and foremost, I know it is tiny. Like one of my rules normally is that I will not buy a bag if it doesn't fit my phone. And no, it does not fit an iPhone 8 Plus. But even though it is pretty small in size, this bag just pays homage to the whole heritage about this brand. This was inspired by an award-winning bag. I'm not going to even attempt to try and say the name, but I'll insert the name here. And this is the picture. And it is just so beautiful one thing um, i will do a close-up as well all around the bag the leather is perforated so hundreds and hundreds of perforation on the leather before it is assembled and another special thing about this bag which i also showed on my clip is that it's all angled stitching and it looks like it's straight but it's not and it's angled so that in itself is pretty hard to do and very time consuming so in terms of the lock let me show you how it opens you just press it like this love that little sound and it opens up and that is the inside so really really tiny inside it is in okay so that's probably an authenticity card yep so inside as you can see it is in goat leather which is very very durable there is two side pockets there which I'm not really sure you probably just use that for a credit card but really it's probably just used as an evening bag I know people also use it as like a display for me I'll be using it as like an evening clutch and when I'm not using an evening clutch I'll just admire it and put it on display this truly is just such a beautiful bag i was very very lucky because the sales associate that helped me at the time told me that these don't always come in and when i was there they happened to have two one in the yellow and one in the pink which you saw which came in a couple of days later i actually visited the store i think on the first or second day i was there and that's when i was lucky enough to be invited to personally tour the atelier so luckily I went early because on my final day that's when I toured the atelier anyway I ultimately decided to go for yellow because it just showed up all the detailing a lot better and this bag I think they said takes three days maybe even more actually to make it is just beautiful so you hold it like this you can hold it like this um, held I'll insert some modeling shots or you just hold it like uh, on along your wrist like that. I know you're going to think maybe it's just so impractical, but I'm just, I don't know, I just really appreciated the craftsmanship. To be honest, there were more bags I wanted. And I just think with this brand, I showed you a bit on the video. The craftsmanship is second to none. Like I'm sure as well, Hermes craftsmanship is amazing, but I didn't get a chance to visit their you know, workshop. But seeing this live, I will definitely be adding more Mona bags to my collection. I love that not many people have them. Oh, I forgot to tell you the size. It is a perfect cube and measures 12 by 12 centimeters. Besides this perforated version, it does also come in plain leather colors. The outside is in a Tyrillion, so that's a calf leather. So the plain versions, I think, start at about 2,500 euro. This is more. This is about 1,000 euro more than that. But in my opinion, I think that's quite okay considering the amount that goes into each of the bag. I just love how they take inspiration from their vintage designs and apply it to their newer designs. So you see that little bit of history. Also, there aren't many houses nowadays that do like century old techniques like leather marquetry. 
I had never heard of that before and I was just astonished how, yeah, that you saw that all the jigsaw pieces of puzzle and they just inlay it all and it's just seamless. So I just can't rave enough about this brand and no, this is not sponsored at all by them. I wish it was and I'm just feel so privileged that I could actually witness it myself and how it was made. So guys, that is my unboxing of my cute little mini vanity bag. I highly recommend you check out the brand if you are in Singapore. For my Singapore viewers, I think they just opened a store last September. And obviously in the US, I think there are a couple of boutiques in Paris, obviously, and a couple around Asia. So if you have one near you, I highly recommend you check out the brand. Brand, and you'll get a pretty exclusive bag I think anyway so that is my little cutie thank you so much for coming on the tour and sharing in my happiness with this little cute bag what are your thoughts have you guys heard of Mona before let me know in the comments below I would love to know so thank you so so much for watching guys thank you to Helene and the team at Mona for being so hospitable if you did like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will catch you guys really soon in my next video. Bye!